Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 41 of Confessions of a Market Maker. I'm your co-host, Ray, a.k.a. All Day Ray, a.k.a. Mambo King. I'm joined here by my benevolent co-host, former market maker of 20 years and current day retail trader, a legendary penny stock paper hanger where he herded in retail sheep like he was straight out of the Old Testament. He's a great... <laughs> He's a great conversationalist, but you're not going to find him talking around pillows. I'm talking about the gorilla of House Street. JJ, how's it going? Hey, Ray, how you doing today? I'm doing <laughs> good, man. I'm doing good. Excited for our guest. He is a senior prop trader at SMB Capital. He trades alongside some heavyweights and is a heavyweight in his own right. He does excellent videos for the firm where he gives out his nuggets of trading wisdom. A young man hailing from South Africa. I'm talking about Ryan ha Hassan? Hassan, that's right. That's it, Ryan Hassan. Ryan, thanks for joining us. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going great. Thanks for the introduction. It's great to be on here with you guys. Yeah, man, really, really appreciate it. I really love that video you put out recently. Um, prompted us to reach out to you, man. So, really excited. How... How has this whole quarantine virus period been from you uh, from a personal standpoint? How's it going? So it's, um, thank God, going well. Um, I came back just before uh, everything sort of um, unfolded with Corona. I came back from New York to visit family and spend some time there um, visiting friends and family and just to catch up with everyone and sort of a month into that, Corona um, started, you know, sweeping the world. And um, six months later, I'm still here. Uh, so from a personal standpoint, it's been, it's been challenging, obviously, uh, trading from home. And it's, it's, it's quite intense in South Africa um, with the regulations. I'm not sure if you know this, but even alcohol has been banned for four months. Uh, really? So yeah, yeah. Uh, all alcohol sales have been banned. For four months, cigarettes, nicotine, all of those products have been banned as well. Um, I think we're actually um, on we number five for the most cases in the world. So it, it, it's been challenging in South Africa, um, but luckily I'm I'm surrounded by friends and family, um, and also good internet connections. So I've been able to trade every day and not miss out on any of the amazing action that we've had. Yeah. Um, so. The things are, are going well. I uh, can't wait to, to go back to the States and trade um, alongside my team members and colleagues uh, and be in the office in that team environment again, which is so important. Yeah. Um, definitely can't complain to be, to be safe and, and healthy during these times. Right, right. Awesome. So how, how is trading? Uh, you've still been in contact with uh, your teammates. Do you guys like Zoom conference or like what's, what's the trading situation like now for you? Yeah, yeah. So in terms of my daily routine, it's, it's very similar to what it's like in New York. I'm just not in the office. Yeah. Um, you know, with Zoom and with uh, Discord and Skype and Gchat, we're connected all the time, me and the firm, um, from partners to team members, uh, colleagues. Um, so we talk uh, first thing in the morning, 9 a.m. We have a team meeting, Team Shark, and there are about seven, eight of us. We go through our top ideas. Um, and then throughout the day, we're sharing ideas, be it on Gchat or uh, Skype call or Discord. And so we're always connected. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. Um, I, always, you know, I grew up playing sports. I always enjoyed the, the camaraderie uh, you know, of teammates. And then playing poker for, you know, for years, it's a very solo activity. Now coming into trading, I really enjoy having others to bounce ideas off of, to talk to. It's more of a team thing. Uh, talk to the importance of your like learning curve, Ryan, what it was like having these guys to learn from, to pick their brain. Uh, what, you know, what was the, the benefits or, you know, I guess just speak on that. It makes a huge difference. And I think for, for newer traders, um, to touch on what you said, you know, in, in some sports, um, trading can be lonely if you make it lonely. Right. But if you aren't scared to ask questions and reach out to people. Even if you're a retail trader trading from home and all you have is Twitter to see what, you know, ideas and what, what's going out in the world, um, and, you know, from Twitter, what people are putting out, 
um, you can still reach out to them and ask questions. And so it doesn't have to be in the firm if you're not, um, if you don't want to be at a firm or if you're not lucky enough to be at a firm. Yeah. So it, it made a huge difference with the learning curve. I think it, it cut the learning curve by just 50% probably. Um, yeah in terms of the time it took me to be profitable, consistently profitable. And the reason why is because I'm around, um, whether physically or connected just online with traders that at the time back uh, when I first started, were doing what I already, uh, what I wanted to do. And so um, I wanted to learn how to trade a certain way or trade a certain stock. And I just had to look to my left or my right. And there was a guy that, um, you know, was at the time and still is incredibly successful at trading that stock. So I just had to pick his brain and not be afraid as a junior trader to ask a senior trader, um, hey man, I saw you shorted, um, you know, X, Y, Z. Why did you short it there? What was your process? Why did you take size off there and add there? And, and uh, it's so important to, to bounce ideas, but also pick the brains of someone that has already achieved what you're trying to do. Um, and so that made all the difference. It, it really did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't imagine uh, someone, you know, wanting to do it on their own as compared to being a part of, you know, a group or a community. I've just seen the benefits myself, like being mentored by, by JJ on here and just talking with other traders throughout the day. Uh, you, like you said, like I probably 50%, I don't even know where, where, you know, I'd be at. Um, and just, just a reminder to the listeners that uh, if you guys do want to learn market auction theory, market profile, trade futures, equities, you can join JJ and I, at our lovely trading community at microefutures.com. Ryan, uh, tell us, let's take it back for a minute. Tell us what it was like when you first got interviewed at SMB Capital and that whole process. Sure, so uh, a little bit further back. And yeah. um, basically I, from like, I'd say around 15, 16, I, I, I really started to, to fall in love with the markets. And first of all, it was investing. Mm -hmm. It starts with investing. Um, and you know Warren Buffett and, 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 and going down that route and reading um, books on investing in fundamental analysis and so that's really what I got stuck into for a good two three years um, and then I came across day trading and, and interacting with the markets on a more regular basis um, and when I was around 19 um, a friend of mine who's a bit older than me, he's working, he was working at the time at a prop firm in Cape Town. And Bella had actually recently visited that firm. And uh, I had read Bella's book and I was talking to my friend and um, he spoke very highly of Bella and Bella shared some insight into what the firm was doing with my friend. And I just loved his book. I loved what he shared with my friend at his firm. Um, and then I started doing more research into SMB and KTG. And um, when I was in my last year of studying, I decided that's just exactly where I wanted to be, specifically at that firm. It's the only prop firm I applied to. Mm -hmm. um, I had other choices to join banks um, in South Africa and abroad and, and go that route, but uh, decided against it, exciting enough. Um, Kind of like what you said uh, when we were chatting earlier, I just, I didn't want a regular job in that sense. I wanted something right. that what I put in is what I get out. It right. Really put yourself to the test, you know, because trading just isn't easy. Um, and so applied to the firm, I went through, if I remember correctly, there's, there was a five step process from you know, general questions to a brain teaser, to a discussion with the manager, to a phone call with Bella, um, and eventually got the job. And, and once I got the job, I was over the moon. And I think, you know, within a month later, I was, uh, I booked a one-way ticket to New York and I was on a plane from South Africa to the States. Yeah. Nice, nice. It's nice. not, I mean, how, a lot of, I imagine there's a lot of actions is the, the more or less like is it what's the interview process like uh wh what are they looking for what are the type of questions you know maybe for people out there that are interested in joining the prop firm sure so first they look and again if i can remember correctly but they're looking for someone that has um obviously you need to be interested in the markets but someone that's really passionate about the markets because i think if you want to succeed at trading 
you can't just like it or maybe you'll get <laughs> really you need to be passionate about it because very true it's not a, a re, i don't want a regular job but it doesn't mean that this isn't a nine to five it's it's a 6 a.m to a right. and it's actually a 24 7 job because you always <laughs> trading is always on your mind on escape so first of all <laughs> You really need to love it and be passionate about it. Um, you need to be competitive, um, and, and that's something they definitely look for. They also look for areas where you've been competitive in the past, so that they can see um, on their end that, that you do have that trait. Um, you definitely need to be open-minded. Um, they also want to uh, make sure that you um, can gel well with their culture and um, potentially see a fit between you and a senior trader. Um, and yeah, off the top of my head, those I would say are, are from my end, the most important for uh, four or five characteristics. Yeah. Now you don't, you don't necessarily have to be an experienced trader, correct? No, no, no definitely. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I should have um, helped that as well. You, you don't need any experience trading. Um, I had very little, I had no experience day trading actually. Yeah. I just had um, invested in a few South African companies. Um, but I had the, the passion and drive um, and, and willingness to really want to learn everything about trading and, and, and start from scratch and just absorb information from the new guys. Um, I don't think they, they, I don't think firms in general want to hire guys straight out of college. I think they know everything. Yeah. Um, those are people that I've seen in the past that are, will fail uh, quicker than others. They want to hire guys that are willing to learn from the ground up um, as opposed to join the firm and say, I have the golden ticket and the winning strategy and I'm going to make money from day one. Um, right. So one guys that will manage their expectations and understand that there's a real learning curve um, and some sacrifice will have to be made in terms of you know, really having to work hard, harder than your friends for the, that are getting other jobs for a good year, two years before you really see the, um, the results. And, mm -hmm. and the job. Right, right, absolutely. And I, you know, JJ's echoed the sentiment and even others we've talked to and that sometimes uh, the smartest people, maybe yeah. with great, great backgrounds, college backgrounds, whatever, aren't the best traders, right? Jay, like you said, some of the best traders you know and have just been like street guys. Definitely. You know, yeah. I know there's, you know, 200, 300 million dollar traders and um, yeah, they've been just, you know, one of the sharpest traders I ever met used to dig, dig swimming pools out for a living before he was a trader on the floor. And uh, man, that guy's one of the sharpest traders I've ever seen fast executes just, you know, he's off the floor and retired now but uh, yeah, it's uh, Reverend Jim. We used to call him the Reverend and <laughs> And man, that guy could trade circles around people. You know, he'd moved a million shares around you. You wouldn't even know what was going on. You know? <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Reverend Jim if he's listening. Yeah. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you, Jay. Um, my, well, well, first, in terms of overqualified, I've seen a lot of guys from, you know, MIT guys that, that have, have traded and they try to um, make sense of everything that's happening. Mm. And that, just, I, I've actually never seen that work. Um, and the oh. best that, that I know, um, and, and is a good friend of mine, he, um, he was a college dropout and um, also had the odd job here and there. And now, just like you said, I also just see him creating circles around so many other great traders. Um, and half the time, what he does doesn't even make sense to me because he sees things that other traders just don't see and, yeah. and can't make sense of. Um, and so yeah, trading's interesting. It is. It really is. Ryan, uh, as far as, I guess, speaking to your style and then maybe other uh, styles uh, at SMB, are you, are you more of like ignore the news type? Like, okay, just, just price action, et cetera. Are there people who are more maybe news driven traders in your firm? I guess you speak to that. Yeah, sure. So, so, have, um, guys that trade so many different strategies at the firm from um, just price action, scalping, uh, swing trades, uh, to imbalances, uh, to fully automated hybrid traders, mm -hmm. um, everything related to, to day trading, all the different strategies. You know, we have guys doing them at the firm. 
Regarding my trading, um, I predominantly trade low floats and small caps. Um, I, I, I love doing research. I love knowing what I'm trading, um, but I don't let that affect my bias. So on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I'll usually look to trade price action, generate cash flow uh, in a trade, you know, here and there throughout the day, just generate cash flow. And once a week, twice a week, there'll be a bigger picture idea, a stock that is perhaps overbought or um, oversold. They have news that I take into account and I have a bias around that news. Um, but until price action confirms my bias, I'm on the sidelines. And then mm -hmm. if price action does confirm it, that's when I'll get in with size and then that will maybe be a, a one or two or three day hold. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, like this morning, um, there was a stock MYOS. It had news. I thought the news was fairly irrelevant or very irrelevant. Um, I thought um, in the pre-market that the stock was being um, overbought by some chat rooms and just being put out there right. um, in a misleading way by chat rooms, creating a lot of false liquidity. And um, once price action confirmed my bias, that was probably a short and gave me a good level to, to trade against, uh, which happened right off the open. I, I don't know the chart, but it was maybe around uh, 290 um, MYOS had stuffed and got in 280. And after uh, the first little trend reversal around I think it was 220 or 230, um, closed out the shorts. And so that's a quick scalp to generate cash. That's uh, nice. Price action and, and news. Um, and then if that stock, for example, had gone to six, seven bucks um, in, you know, was turned into a day two and a day three play of a short squeeze, for example, and then topped out, um, put in a lower high, gave a good level to risk against and is liquid enough to take size, it would have been, um, you know, on my list for a potential short swing. So to short against a lower high for a 50% retracement in price um, and, you know, hold for three or four days. And so that's kind of, you know, if, if there's meat on the bone, it will be a two, three day trade. And if there's just a gap up and likely it's going to fail, then it'll just be a skull. Um, and then there are large caps as well uh, that I trade each day too. But most of my income um, comes from small caps. Okay. How, oh, nice and liquid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how active during the day are you trading, Ryan? Is this like an all day thing? Do you have certain time frames or um, time of day that you try and stick to? Um, so I, I trade, I know where and, and treating it like a small business. I know where I am most profitable, what time of the day I'm most profitable. Yeah. And for me, um, and this goes back to, um, you know, first year trading. I know that the first, the first hour I make my most money. And so that's where I'll be um, as active as I should be on the day. Mm -hmm. And then the last the last 45 minutes to hour uh, to an hour is also where I'm, I'm most profitable. And so those two slots is where I'll be eyes completely glued to the screen. Um, I'll, I'll have the stocks that I'm watching, my watch list, my if then statements, and that's where um, you know my hands will be on the keyboard. Throughout the day, um, from around 11 a.m. New York time until 2.33 p.m. I'll be Eastern time, I'll be, um, Flicking through stocks, reviewing what I traded on the open, talking to other traders, see how they traded, what I traded, um, doing some research, seeing if there's some higher time frame setups that are that are taking shape. Um, I'll work out. I like to work out throughout the day or in midday. Um, sometimes go for a walk and just sort of break up the day into two sessions. Um, mm -hmm. So stay refreshed. Um, and yeah. That's usually my routine during, during and throughout the day. Okay. So since you started, Ryan, how would you say you evolved as a trader um, from, you know, strategy and, and style wise? So when I first started, I traded everything, um, you know, kind of going back to what I said in the beginning about a characteristic of when you join. I came in saying, I don't know anything. I don't know who I am as a trader, um, what I'm good at, what I, what I like, what I don't like, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to trade everything. I'm going to trade large caps, um, you know, breaking news, earning, small caps, medium caps, ETFs, indices, 
trade everything and then with very, very small size because when you start as a trader, um, you go from losing to losing a little bit less to breaking even to making a little bit and then sort of off to the races or in an ideal world, that's how it should be. Um, and so that's what I did for my first six months and I traded super small size so I'd never dug myself into a hole. And after six months, I looked at all my stats um, on TraderView and I saw that I basically broke even or lost money in everything other than trading low floats. And so I dug a little bit deeper into low floats and I found that mostly it's on the short side where I make money. Uh, and most of it is two or three setups. And so then I set a goal and I said, well, for the next six months, I'm going to eliminate everything and I'm only going to trade those two or three setups as long as they you know still pop up every day and luckily we were in a very good market for low floats when i started in in the uh, beginning of 2016 and so that was the goal i set and six months later i was consistent trading low floats um, not making a lot but you know, i was consistent and finding and, and, and really deepening my understanding on filings and the mechanics and the technicals behind these stocks and how they move and why they move um, and why some of them, some don't, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the following year, I said, all right, well, now I've, I've sort of got that waxed where I can size up and make a living from trading these. And so what skills do I have from trading these low floats? And for me, it was, you know, finding um, certain chart patterns on the short side to manage risk, identifying stocks that are overbought, um, identifying the short squeeze, being able to... Um, see when a stock is going parabolic or putting in a top and, and then the list goes on and on and on. And then I said, okay, well, those are the skills. So where can I, what else can I apply those skills to? And then it turned into um, not only day trading those stocks, but also swinging them um, when they were overbought um, and kind of went parabolic. And then that turned into also day trading large caps on the short side that were overbought or on breaking news and using those scalping momentum skills and low floats to trade um, in play large caps on the short side or on the long side i mean long and short same thing you just flip the chart around and it, it really is you know the same thing if you think of it that way yeah. um trade those that are just exhausted on on the long side um and then you know i take all of those skills that i learned from trading those different strategies and i turn it into um getting long low floats to be a part of the front side and the back side. So when a low floats going from three to six to seven to eight, and then getting out of the long and flipping shorts and catching it on the downside and then moving into OTC stocks. And so I'm rambling on, but, but really the point is, is that I found one strategy and, and one type of stock that worked, yeah. um, identified the skill and what that makes me as a trader. And then where else, and I apply that to create multiple streams of income as a trader. And so now it's evolved into um, a lot as a price action trade of different stocks and strategies, but it all started with, with just one little element. Yeah. Yeah, man, you, from what I've gathered from you, from, you know, watching the video and talking with you, you, the, your whole process, you went about learning trading almost seems like very like textbook. You, you, you stayed open-minded. You, you, dug it you took you uh, all the stats you dug into what made you correct and so this is real good stuff you're talking like for for the listeners um ryan something i've been thinking on recently and i, I want to get your thoughts on it okay. and something i like about smb uh and i've heard mike talk about it uh you know the, the for the listeners he's the the owner or the you know co-founder of smb capital it, it seems like there's a an, a an element of like aggression you guys employ right like not like hey if it's an a plus setup boom we're going for it like you know put, put money in there and being a poker player you have to be aggressive to to make money that's that's the the right strategy so if anything i've been maybe a little bit too aggressive at times trading mm -hmm. I, i'm thinking along speak to the balance of patience and and aggression right because you need both of them correct yeah yeah um, and so where, where that aggression comes from, just, just on my understanding, and, and, and you know, Bella may correct me on this, but I think where it comes from is if you've proved to yourself and the firm that you can um, consistently make money in a certain setup, for example, yeah. and then you get um, a really juicy 
um, maybe it only comes across three, four, five times a year, that setup. And that takes shape and you make the same amount of money in that setup as you would in the not so sexy setup the next day. Essentially, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the question comes from, it's your job to be in your seat the whole day. And when you see it, to put on the size, because if you can sit in the, your seat the whole day, you might as well go for it. And so when that one every three months or two months setup does come, your job now that you've proven to be successful and profitable as a trader is to really go for it because you have all the resources at your disposal and anything less than that would be a disservice to yourself. And so yep. I think that sort of mindset as well as all of us being competitive and in, in a really healthy way competing with one another um, because we're all seeing the same thing in the same setup to, to really test our limits and see what we're comfortable with risking uh, in a trade. Um, and then patience to wait for that because like I said that trade doesn't come along um, that often and I'm talking about the trades that can make your month or make your your quarter or your your year right but you can sit around and wait for that trade and finally it comes and presents itself you need to go for it um, and so that I think is where the the aggression um, comes from yeah yeah definitely and I, I think I, th I mean, you, you have to, to maximize your upside. I mean, if you're really, if you're really trying to go for the gusto, you know, like you, you got to, uh, you got to put some aggression. Right. Let, let me ask you something. Uh, another thing I was thinking about, and I don't know if this is the right way to, uh, to view it. Cause there's so many different trading styles and strategies out there, but within like, let's say like your style, right. Uh, the way you trade, is there an optimal way to uh, approach it in a sense? I, I don't know if that question is clear. Um, uh, elaborate a little bit. Um, from a, you know what? Let's let let's let, let's skip it. Never mind. Let, let's skip it. I don't I don't well, know. I think, I think I know what you mean. Like when you say approach it in terms of um, how to manage trades and what to look for, for example. Yes. Like, is there? And I, because I mean, I'm a little confused myself. That's why I was even saying, like, I don't know if maybe we should just skip this. But like, yeah, I find myself thinking about, like, yeah, because I, I want to optimize every single thing I do. But I, I don't know if maybe if it comes to a point is okay. Is it optimizing or is it like nitpicking? Which you know, the way the way I trade, and I think it starts off with, with um, especially when you're scalping. So the trades that I was saying regarding generating cash flow throughout the day is. For me, trading isn't about being right or wrong. It's just about having positive expectancy and, and positive risk reward. Absolutely. And so looking at um, these B plus trades that occur really every day that allow you to just generate cash flow and put up green days, um, I'm not looking at the trade and saying, well, I think this is going to go lower. I think it's going higher. And so I'm just getting in because I think I'm going to be right. I'm saying, well, you know, I, I, I think I know what the stock's going to do, but price action is saying it's doing something different. So maybe let's be open-minded and just let price action talk to me. And then I let price action talk to me and you know something sets up on the chart and I ask myself, well, if this is what the stock's telling me it's going to do, not what I think, but this is what the stock is saying it's going to do. And I have enough reason to believe it's going to continue and there's some momentum, then where am I wrong if I had to get in now and follow the direction? Um, and then I look at that area and I figure out my risk reward and doesn't make sense. And it's an A setup, a B setup. Um, is it kind of like a dinky trade where I shouldn't be risking much, but there's probably 60, 70% chance that it works. And I run through all of this. Um, but the first thing for, for, I think, newer traders to understand, and, and especially how I trade, is when it's just these trades that come up every single day, the reason why I can um, be positive and green 90% every single month in terms of days is because I don't care about whether I'm right or wrong. It's all about does that trade have positive risk reward? And if I think back all the you know five years of data I've collected about my trading, if I make that trade, um, what's the chance that I'm going to make money on it? Because I've made all of these trades before and I've seen all these setups. And so I won't take anything if it's not going to um, you know bear reward. And it, again, it goes back to treating trading like it's your business. You wouldn't. Um, place an order for something or take stock of something if you don't think it's going to sell. If exactly. You know, if there's a 10% chance it's going to sell, why are you going to, why, why would you sink your money into that stock and just let it sit and, you know, so 
it's just having that mindset of, of really having respect for your, your capital and, and your time. Very much. Nice. That's a good question, Ray, because you can Very sum much. that up by saying, you know, you're making a sound business decision, right? And if you think of trading that way, right, I'm very glad that you're on the podcast today because I, I keep talking about this to people and, and, and I think it's just because of the marketing you see in the trading culture that goes away from that. But it's just a sound business decision, right? And, exactly. uh, and that's, that's a great question, Ray. Yeah. Um, so, Ryan, what would you say is your biggest strength or – maybe an attribute that made uh, that was natural to you when it came to trading and then conversely what was difficult um, for trading or your your biggest weakness that you gotta you know constantly work on so I'd I'd say I wouldn't say a weakness but I'd say a really big challenge for me is sizing up Um, that has been for me it's been difficult Um, and you know I'm at a stage now where where I'm I'm happy with my size but as a trader you always want to grow and so um, I I tend to get quite comfortable when um, you know given a certain risk parameter or size parameter uh, I get quite comfortable with it and then it's just you know it's you kind of go with go with the flow and and, and go through the paces Um, but as a trader you always want to grow and you always need to push yourself and so um, regardless of how successful or, or, or how big or, or you know consistent or profitable you are, you're always going through the constant challenge of needing to size up and test the limits and and be uncomfortable in the trade because you know we're trading to test our limits and 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 the sky's the limit with with trading and so for me it's it's a big challenge to constantly push myself and put on that extra size and um, you know with that comes bigger losses, bigger winners, but also bigger losses, which make you, um, you know, more ready to hold for longer and to have those. Players. And so that's something in the beginning I struggled with was first getting consistently profitable, getting comfortable, and then almost going through that again with sizing up and getting a little bit more uncomfortable, which can sometimes throw you off. Um, yeah. So that's a well, let me ask you this, Ryan, because it, that's that's a struggle of mine as well. And, and even dating back to poker, like when I would, you know, be making money, then it progressed to playing higher games, higher limits. The losses always hurt because it's like, damn, I'm not used to losing this much money. It is, is, and I, I've thought about this a lot. I don't know if there's any way to combat this other than just just put yourself in it. Right. I mean, what, what are your thoughts? You have to, as long as you're making a trade that, that, the right trade and it's coming from the right place and you've done your research and you manage yeah. it well, then then you have to i mean in order to grow you're going to take bigger losses uh, there's no trader out there that just always makes money um you, you have to take those losses and if it was a good trade and it was just the 30 percent, 40 percent chance playing out that you weren't going to make money in that trade then so be it but next trade um you may lose too but the third trade if you're making them on good risk reward trades that trade will wipe out the losses and, and you can just keep going through those paces once you find um, your consistency and your edge. And so, you know, with that came the reason why I could overcome that and overcome that. And that's because I'm very patient and I don't like to make trades if um, I feel like it's gambling. I only like to make trades if I know that, you know, this is a trade I can look at all my stats and I've made it um, 500 times and I'll look at 500 times. Um, I've been right 350 times. Or I've only been right 100 times, but the risk reward is seven to one. So it doesn't really matter the times that I'm wrong, um, that the winner's right. And so having that confidence and confirmation when I make trades has made it a lot easier to size up because now I know that, look, it's just at the end of the day, what I'm risking is just a percent of my total loss limit for the day. And so the number changes but the percent will always stay the same so you know if i have a certain risk now that i um you know i have a say say my total risk on the day my loss limit is a dollar and i have um, an a plus setup that i love and for that a plus setup i'm going to risk 50 percent of my daily stop so i'll risk 50 cents on that setup um and then i do well and my risk gets bumped up to two dollars for the day I'm still going to be risking 50%. Um, it may be a bigger thing, one dollar, but it's the same percent. And so keeping things as a percentage also helps. Um, I think for newer traders that could help too. Instead of thinking, 
in terms of dollars, just think as a percent um, and be a bit more systematic with, with that regard, in that regard. Um, and, and, and yeah, hopefully that, that answers uh, your question. I know I tend to ramble on, so at any point, if you want to no, jump good. in. Ryan, no, this no. is good. This is good. This great is good. Stuff. No, no, great stuff, Ryan. Yeah, no, no, real good stuff. So, Ryan, what role does technology or software assistance back testing play into your strategies? It plays, it plays quite a big role. Um, when I first started, uh, everything I trade now, I did back test um, to the extent that I could. Um, a lot of it is it's very discretionary, so you can't precisely back test what I do, but I did to the best of my ability. Um, that gave me some more confidence in what I was doing. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I use, um, without being automated and having scripts running, I use technology, I think, to the best that I could be. And that's having scanners, so um, you know, coding my own scanners and alerts to alert me to every potential setup um, within my toolbox that I should be looking at or should be trading. I'll be alerted to that. Uh, when I get in in the morning, usually, um, I'll look at all the gappers. So I'll have a watch list and a scanner that I bought to alert me to all the stocks that I should be looking at in the morning will alert me gapping up, gapping down, news. Um, I'll have board views. So the electric vehicle sector has been hot lately. So I'll have a little board view with all the different electric vehicle stocks with um, market names, with uh, large cap in play names. Um, you know, color code them if they're above or below VWAP or trading at VWAP, different articles. And I mean, I, I have probably 15 or 20 different little board views and scanners running um, at all times. And that's to alert me to all of my different, um, I would say my different niches and what I'm good at. And these are here to supplement me and say, hey, you know, this is one of your potential trades in a large cap or small cap or medium or overboard, oversold, uh, trading, uh, in a range at the two or three day VWAP or, and so throughout the day and I look, look through all of these scanners to potentially find one or two, um, you know, a trades to make in the day, um, which I wouldn't find if I never had um, all these eyes in the market pointing these out to me. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, Jay, do you, um, I'm, I know I'm asking all the questions here. Do you, do you have anything <laughs> from my man? I don't know if I'm. Yeah, no, I got a lot. I've actually got quite a bit here. I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to let you finish. Yeah, well, uh, I, I would. Okay, I'm going to ask one more, then I'll let you jump in. Okay, sure. So Ryan, I wanted, because you're on the, the guy uh, Sharks team, correct? Yeah. He's, uh, I know he's a big trader, maybe like one of the most successful in the firm. What have you learned? Like, what is he like? And what have been some of the big takeaways you've gotten from him? Um, well, on a personal level, He's, he's awesome. He's just such a great guy. Um, so driven, so humble. And, and uh, when I first started, what really stood out to me is, you know, here's this super successful trader, one of the guys I was trying to, to emulate at the time, and I still am. Um, but he, he's always willing to give his time to help newer traders and ask and, and answer questions. And, and so that really stood out to me, just a really great guy. Um, and he's... He, he, he's actually quite interesting is he one of the reasons he got into trading which will resonate with you is he loved to play poker and uh, that really got him um, I think more into trading than 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 otherwise yeah uh, one of the things that I've learned from him is managing expectations that's been a big thing um, and bigger picture managing expectations specifically when I started on this team understanding the learning curve is real um, also mindset uh, as a trader and on a day-to-day -day basis, really taking stock of what's the market doing? Where have we come from? Where are we now? Um, you know, is some energy coming out of the market? Should you be dialing back a little bit and not, you know, be so heavy on, on the pedal? Um, zooming out on a particular stock and asking the same questions and you know, not always going for the shiny object, maybe sometimes going for the stock that not, many people are watching because that's where the easier money is. Um, and his, you know, his hard work is also very motivating to, to a lot of the other traders at the firm because he's, you know, here's a guy and the other traders at the firm like him who are just doing so exceptionally well, but you know, I still get sent his reviews every day after the close as a team, we all send our reviews to each other. 
Dol Sensor's reviews, um, his is probably the most detailed out of anyone else's on the team. Um, and you know, you wouldn't think so. He's, he's the most senior, um, most successful trader on the team, but his review and, and his work ethic is second to none, um, which is very inspiring. And so, you know, being around a trader like that is is awesome because it just motivates you and 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 also opens your eyes that kind of like I was saying earlier with sizing, um, you know, of course it's not for him sizing, but traders are always working on their game because you'll be satisfied and but you'll always be hungry because you know you can always do better and be bigger, be uh, bigger and um, seeing someone that's doing what I dream of doing in, in the next few years, um, having achieved it, but still working hard to get to a new, a new level and a new level and a new level. It's just awesome. Um, and so, yeah, big shout out to Shark because he's, he's, he's taught me a lot of what I know. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Shark. Yeah, no, that's great, man. I, that, that's a blessing that you have these people to, you know, pick their brain and learn from and I uh, appreciate you sharing, sharing some of that with us. All right, Jay, you could, uh, you could jump in now. Cool. I, you know, I get a lot of, because we do teach, I get a lot of questions from people, you know, saying that they want to be a prop trader. So let, I just wanted to ask you, first of all, it's great to have you here. It's really, really cool. Uh, I'm an old guy to see how dedicated and how disciplined you guys are, um, you know, and how seriously you take the craft. Um, I think that's very, very cool. Um, if you can just kind of explain, you know, you know, Ray was going through the interview process. So what happens when you actually join a prop firm and, and what's that process like? Because people are asking me, is there a buy-in or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, do you have to come up with some of your own capital? Um, it, just walk us through how, how it worked for you. Sure. Um, so I can't speak for other firms, but I know uh, at our firm, there's, there's no buy-in at all. Um, the firm completely back you and support you. When I started, um, we go on a simulator. I went on a simulator for a couple of months, I think two or three months. Um, and during the time, uh, I was in a class of 10, uh, I believe that started. And we would have two or three meetings uh, during the day, one in the morning, discuss opening ideas. Um, the floor manager would share some of the ideas that the senior guys were looking at. Then we'd have another meeting, midday, another meeting, um, sometimes sort of midway through the afternoon, um, the close, and then one after the close. And so the first two, three months, we're going through the training program uh, that SMT, um have in-house, and we're also trading on a simulator and getting access to what the senior traders are doing, and also learning from one another with all of these meetings and sharing trades and, and um, really learning from each other's mistakes too. Uh, and then after that that process you interview for uh, a team you go live uh, for about a couple of months after that sorry and, you, know, you trade small size you trade live and you know you've built your playbooks and you figuring out who you are and uh, uh, what has resonated with you as a trader um, and after about four months you you interview with all of the team leads and then the team leads select who they want to be on their team and who they want to you know, sort of mentor and take under their wing. Um, and that's really where, where the fun starts. And so after about um, five, six months, I joined Shark's team. Um, and that's where I could take everything I'd learned the last six months and start applying it um, on a more, um, I guess, just on a deeper uh, uh, level and just on another level. Um, because now I'm trading alongside a trader who's, um, you know, actively trading and successful and really begin to see how someone specializes in one niche or in five niches. And, and that's where the fun starts. Um, but yeah, the, other, the, the firm, um, you know, they completely back you. You don't put up capital. They give you all the capital. They give you all the technology you need. You're around traders, you get mentored. Um, and so it's, it's, all the tools are there uh, for you to succeed as long as you have the right uh, mindset and, um, and work ethic and, you know, along with a hundred other things. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's, it's, it's really great because it, in this, you know, trading is now a very, very popular thing. 
you know, uh, they're opening up 100,000, 200,000 accounts every month at these places. And, you know, so every time something gets popular, the vultures come, right? And um, so I, I'm, you know, we have a lot of, you know, younger folks out there who are really interested in this. What should they look for if, you know, they're coming across, you know, what should they look for in a firm? Um, you know, if they're, trying to get in like it's kind of a two-way street you know the firm has to accept you as well but what you should you look for and what kind kind of places should you avoid you know in the prop world um i mean you definitely want to avoid the places that don't offer any training Mm -hmm. you want to you know because you're there to learn and and then there to trade and make money so you don't want to go to a place that won't give you any training or give you access to the traders that are making money um, you want the culture to exist at the firm where you can ask questions. You can go up to a senior trader before the open, after the close and say, hey, man, you know, what are your thoughts on the day? What are you trading? Um, and you also don't want to be at a firm that says, um, you know, you can join our firm with pleasure, um, but you got to put up this amount of money. And um, that, that is very easy to get in because it's very <clears throat> easy to get into a firm. There's probably a reason for that. Um, so those are probably the places you want to avoid um and also for the new guys that are interested and in, in looking to get in at um, prop firms um you know just go online and read reviews 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 often don't lie um and so just see what current and former employees have had to to say about their experience um and you can get a lot from that too that's great you know smb sounds like a really great environment to trade in i mean i miss I mean, I was on an institutional desk and it was completely different. We were like animals, but, um, you know, they, you know, that sounds like a really cool collaborative environment. I mean, I'd go up the first thing, you know, when you start at, you know, back in the nineties of those firms, you go up to a trader and go, Hey, how you doing? He's like, yeah, get me an F and coffee now go. <laughs> right. That's, you know, that's like, yeah, it was this kid standing here. Hey, go get me a coffee. What are you doing? Make yourself useful. Right. So it's, it's nice that, you know, that you have that, you know, collaboration where you can go up to a senior trader because how I learned was you just eavesdrop on these guys because you wouldn't ask, dare ask them a question. You'd just kind of sit there and you'd hear them talking and be like, oh, okay, that's how they do it, right? <laughs> and uh, so that sounds really cool. I like that. Well, it's still like that to an extent. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people, even when I first started, I would often just eavesdrop a little bit on the senior trader. <laughs> I'd be a little bit nervous to go up to them in case one of them would be like, dude, get, you know, get the hell away. <laughs> and, and we all were like that because they're guys in big trades and you're like, oh, what are they doing? I don't know what they're doing. But none of us would go and ask them because they're in a big trade. And we're, so we kind of just like, we'll yeah. a little bit closer to where they were sitting so we yeah. could, could kill the actual players. <laughs> And then we found out that yeah, they, they don't mind at all, actually. Just yeah, that, that's very cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tribute to the, uh, the management of that firm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Good stuff. Sorry. Okay, Ray, take her away. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Now, now um, uh, you know, maybe we can get to some fun things now. You know, the appreciate the trading talk. <laughs> oh. That was good. Learned a lot. Well, no, I mean. <laughs> Here we go. Listen, Ryan, you're a young guy and making money, living in New York City. I don't know what South Africa's like, but you got to tell me what, what's the dating life like, the nightlife. You got to have a lot of fun, I bet. Oh, it was a lot of fun with girlfriends. So I don't know if she's <laughs> like <this>. uh, Oops. <laughs> no, it was great, man. New York, New York was was, um, was so much fun and still is i can't wait to get back for different reasons kiara if you are listening now don't worry um (laughs) it's it's it's, there's there's always something going on and coming from cape town um to the city like new york where where literally you know you want to drink it's one two in the morning you want to have fun or whatever there's just always bars you know and so you know, during the week's all work and then Friday comes and we all leave the firm uh, at around 4.30 after the close. We end early, we go for drinks and, uh, you know, then I meet up with the friends and that would continue really until Sunday. <laughs> yeah. You have to when you're trading uh, in this yeah. high stress environment, you know, you've got to you know, get your workout set, you've got to enjoy, enjoy life a bit on the weekends and New York isn't, isn't short of that. So... Uh. 
And it was, yeah, it was great. After a few years, it, you know, your body can't take it that much. Um, <laughs> so winding down a bit, not, not drinking as much and going out as much. Yeah. 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 Here and there. Shout, shout out to your girlfriend. Yeah. Hey, they, they, um, Ryan, the, the, the accent when you got to America, the women, women like your accent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you get that, yeah? No, I did, man. They loved it. I'm just hearing it from a guy. It's a little bit strange. Never <laughs> well, I'm the, I know women, Ryan. I'm just saying. I'm sure they're eating it up. That's all I'm saying. I'm just... No, no. He, that, Ryan, he's probably practicing so he can emulate it. You know, I am. I'm going to replay this podcast over and over. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm Ray from, I'm from Johannesburg. Nice to meet you. <laughs> no, the accent definitely helps. The accent, the accent helps. Well, yeah, American girls like the South African. I don't know what it is. It's it's other places in the world not so much, but girls in America seem to love the accent. Yeah, yeah. Any any notable differences between American women and the women in South Africa? Um, women in South. I have to choose my words carefully because I'm here now. The women in South Africa are um, they're amazing. I, honestly, I think the most beautiful women in the world. Mm -hmm. um, in America, I think are a little bit more, um, in a sense, I would say outgoing, um, okay. but more just like easy, easy to get to know originally and hold a conversation with, and just kind of, um, you know, have fun, um, you know, off the bat. And and I think the women in South Africa can be a bit, um, a bit more um, restrained when it comes to meeting someone new and, and getting to know someone. Um, yeah, and I think it's because the culture is very different. Um, in South, South Africans are so friendly and, and they'll always welcome you. But in the sense that in South Africa, like when I went to to college, you go, you know, it's it's 15 minutes away from my house, so you always stay, um, you know, very close to home and, and in a bubble in a sense. Whereas in the states, people travel, you know, from one coast to another coast, and and you're always meeting new people, and so. I'd say that's a big difference, not only between um, girls, but just South Africans and Americans in general. Yeah. Yeah. And Trey, any cultural adjustments you had to make when you came here or it's similar-ish enough? I'd say similar-ish enough. Yeah. I would say you know, two of the biggest things, the one was having to roll my R's when I spoke because people just couldn't understand me. I mean, it just, and it would kill me. Like, 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 give me an example. Like what? Like, what would you say? Like, what? Like, I would say, where are we going? They'd say what? And I'd be like, oh, where are we? <laughs> like, I'm speaking English. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like no, just, just speak slower. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we, all, we have different um, names for, for things. So, you know, in, in South Africa, we call it... <laughs> Call the traffic lights a robot. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's. I'd be in a cab and I'd be like, "Yeah, just turn left at the robot." You at the what? Yeah, <laughs> oh. oh, we lost him. He oh, froze. No. Oh. So where do you see a robot, my man? What are you talking about? Oh, there he is. I'm here. No, sorry. Oh, you back, Ryan? I'm back. Can you hear me? Okay, we hear you. Yes, yes. You were sorry for that, all the listeners. We had a little technical Absolutely. difficulties. Ryan, so I'm yeah, back. the so last, bit, last bit I heard was you telling him to make a right at the robot. Exactly. So you know, we yeah. tell him right at the robot. He hasn't. He's he's looking for a robot now, walking across the street. <laughs> those those small 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 differences, but overall, not much of a not much of a culture shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Man, uh, it, w when I watched that video you put out last week or two weeks ago, uh, first thing that stood out to me, man, I love the frames, man, you got on. <laughs> well, I, I do. No, no, I like them. I've been, you know, honestly, like I, I wear contacts, but I'm like looking for some like glasses. What, what, uh, what brand are those? What's, what's the. Right, so this is, this is an unknown brand. It's a South African brand called, uh, uh sure, sure fire, super fire. And, okay. uh, there's a small kiosk at the shopping mall down the road where I bought these, but when I come to the States, I'll be sure to grab you a pair. Grab me, yeah, when you come back to New York, yeah, I'll have to link up with you. Like that, maybe Absolutely. like a gold, I would like maybe like a gold, uh, <laughs> gold frame on them. 
You know, just well, to be I'll different, because I can't wear the same ones as you, Ryan. I can't, you know, I can't bite your style now. I'll get you a pair like this, and then you oh. can do it however you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Because I don't, I don't like biting people's style, you know, you got to have your own thing. But I like, I like the frames. I like the artwork, too, man. I, I, uh, you got good style. You got a sense of, uh, you like artwork, style, clothing, like those things, yeah? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she watches over me while I train, man. She's like my evil eye. She keeps things, she keeps yes. safe. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Very nice. All right, let's see um, what else I got for you. Um, books, are you, uh, are you a reader at all? Any, any good books you're reading lately? Um, the second time I just finished rereading Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, have you uh, read that? No, I haven't. I haven't actually, no. Oh, man, it's, it's I wouldn't say um, self-help. It's just... It, it, it keeps me in check as a trader. Um, so basically the book's all about how a lot of people see, you know, overnight successes or a lot of people, um, you know, want to make, uh, I want to make a million dollars and then they just focus on that's the goal. I want to make a million dollars. But they think about what goes into achieving that goal and getting there. And, yeah. uh, you know, you see an overnight success, but you don't see the last four or five years someone put into achieving or, or getting to where they are. And so this book's all about improving and growing one percent every single day um and making the mistakes learning from them developing the right habits uh the foundation and it's mm. about, but it applies so well to trading um and it was actually gifted to me by bella um read it once loved it then sort of forgot about it read some other books and picked it up again about a week ago and, and just finished it and it's it's not related to trading but when it comes to trading it's, it's a book that i recommend so highly in the absolutely most. absolutely man and that, that's that's what i really uh was it atomic habits i'm writing this down right now atomic yeah atomic habits by james Clear. okay all right yeah i, I, I just I, and, I, and i loved everything you've been speaking about like um mindset wise as well and it's like this sounds like this book is just echoing the same sentiment you were saying before it's like the process not the results uh, exactly. which is like, I think that's when I finally took that like turn in my head and which I still got to always remind myself, you know, I'm still human and like, I still like get attached to results, you know, somewhat, I mean, it's kind of hard not to, but once you like make that turn, I think it's just a huge difference, um, you know, in, in my development. Um, so, all right, let's see what else. Um, yeah, go ahead. I totally agree. Cause, and when you start all trading it, it's hard not to only, it's hard to not only think about um, you know I made X amount today and I should have made more or I lost and damn I shouldn't have lost that much and you get so wrapped up in those results as opposed to thinking okay I I, I made that or I lost that but what why did I make that or why did I lose that what mistakes did I make what didn't I do that I should have done and taking note of all of that as opposed to your P and L and then doing that every day and then things compound and then you know six months later, you can start focusing a little bit on the money side of things. How can I be bigger? And, and I should have made more in that. And again, it's the process because things compound over time, as long as you focus on the process and the habits and the foundation in the beginning. Um, understand, just, just understanding that um, makes all the difference. It does, yep, it really does. All right, Ryan, uh, musical taste. Musical taste, yeah. yeah. I, it depends what mood I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, from from rap to jazz to deep house to techno to yeah honestly just what whatever mood that i'm in yeah yeah the verse that's good yeah that's what good. Uh, favorite? Uh, yeah i would, I would go hip-hop definitely hip-hop a lot of even just like i drop a lot of hip-hop references in the podcast i don't know if people catch or not some people do some people don't but yeah hip-hop definitely i love jazz too though like if it's like a nice mellow mellow yeah. mood uh, I love jazz, but you know, a lot of hip hop is, is jazz sampled. So, you know, which makes sense why I like that sound. Um, yeah, man, I like psychedelic rock, you know, um, a little you bit of everything. Any, uh, Go ahead. You listen to any Hugh Masekela, Ruin? Who, me? No, Ryan. Oh. Any, any, who, who's that? Hugh Masekela, check him out. He's a, he's a South African jazz, uh, you uh, Masekela, yeah. 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 Let me write that down. I'll definitely check that out. Well, when you guys are trading, do you ever listen to music? Yeah, I sometimes. Do. Yeah, I, I do. do yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. As well. 
JJ, he surprises me with some of his uh, musical references I, uh, sometimes. <laughs> what you, would you hit me with the other day? Uh, uh, the Jay-Z. Uh, hit me with a... <laughs> Oh yeah, because I was oh I was telling him right, I was telling him like I, I um you know I'm seeing this this new girl, and like she she she's mixed she she's a, she's um I said I said I told him that she was Indian and he goes what what'd you say a uh, red dot or feather <laughs> yeah which is a very 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 inappropriate thing to say but I was quoting a song yeah. lyric to see if you'd catch it it was a Jay Z so there, there's yeah, our disclaimer yeah, yeah there's our disclaimer right <laughs> there's our 17b disclaimer okay. <laughs> Yeah, we know. Don't cancel the podcast. Don't come for us, people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know every day everyone's getting canceled these days. It was, you know, it's a song lyric. Yeah, you know, we're having fun. But yeah, no, I thought that was funny. Yeah, you surprised me with that. That Jay Z, girls, girls, girls. That's funny. Yeah. So he's funny. He and he he acts like he's he's so like uh you know he's not hip, but he he got some he's got some hipness in him, I guess. Um, well, let's see, Ryan, favorite movie or movies if you don't have one. Um, favorite movies. I mean, because we're doing a podcast and talking about trading, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Boiler Room. Love that. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Short was great. Uh, that's, we can do favorite series because series is where it's at at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, what did I recently watch? Uh, Mad Men is classic. Um, love that. I saw them in the bars and that that whole vibe when i first watched it i've watched it twice now when i first watched that that was like probably five percent of the reason why i was so quick to jump on the plane just because of that the culture and um, you know just that 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 feeling you get um i, I just i just love that and uh, the jazz and whatnot um dexter's great show friends all-time favorites mm -hmm. um about uh, billions have you uh Billions, I, I first, uh, I think like two, two, yeah, two seasons, two or three seasons, and then sort of um, just got, you know, just kind of lost, lost track of it, but I've been meaning to get back into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we enjoy that one here. We've actually, we've yeah. actually, we've, we've had on two of the actors, like on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's been cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a cool little experience for us. So, you know, shout out to Billions. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, all right, Ryan, you're on death row. What's what's your final meal? Final meal on death row. Yeah, what's your last meal? Yeah. Yeah, as, as, of, as of right now, just because I'm very into it, um, and a lot of the guys at the firm aren't going to like that I'm going to say this because they aren't fans of the stock. Uh, I'm going to go with a juicy Beyond Burger. Oh my it's, god. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> there's something. <laughs> Interesting. It would be funny if some of the guys were short and the stock just went up. But beyond burger, there's, there's, uh, and maybe, maybe it's just I have weird taste buds, but there's just something right about that burger. It's just, really? it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and, and they recently started selling more like probably six, seven months ago in South Africa and in Cape Town. Um, if you go to the three, four stores that have them, they are always sold out. Really, crazy, right? Yeah, it's real popular. It is real popular. Yeah, really popular. Um, right. Second choice would probably be sushi. Love sushi. Um, and pizza, pasta, foods like music with me. It depends what mood I'm in, and then I love something so much in the next day. <laughs> Indian foods also. Oof. Indians, Indians up there too. Indian and yeah. Mexican. Yeah, everything. I'm an indecisive person. Other with trading can make decisions. Stick to it with life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it, yeah, definitely. That, that's good. That's good, though. It, it brings up something we were talking. I believe we were talking about this before we started recording. Uh, and I know you're a believer in it. I'm a big believer in it as well. That you can like learn, like you've learned about yourself through trading, correct? Yeah, so much. Yeah, uh, it's just, uh, it's a real fascinating concept. I mean, I, you know, first with poker, really, you know, because poker and trading are, are uh, other than the technical aspects of it, like the whole mental game is the same, right? So I, I like, it, it's incredible how much I learned about myself through these endeavors. Um, and it's like, I'm almost like grateful. You know, I am grateful in a sense, you know, and like these lessons that we learned, I think we can take into like broader life or just like even just my everyday decision making. I think is better 
because of these pursuits. I mean, would you agree? I, I, I do. Again, it's, it's, it, it puts things into perspective. Um, yeah. In the beginning, I would, I would really beat myself up over um, my results on the day or certain trades or mistakes that I made. Um, and it puts things into perspective. Um, you know, something along, along, you know, sort of this line too is, uh, I was speaking with to Dr. S about this probably like two, two and a half years ago. Mm. And I had a really bad trade, which turned into a bad week. Um, and then you can get into a bit of a slump as a trader where your results sort of wrap themselves around you. And I was speaking with him and he said, Ryan, you got to remember, because I had said, look, trading's my life, man, because I really love it. And at the time I was like, this is just, I'm, this is, I eat, breathe, live trading. And he was like, well, that's, that's a big mistake because as a trader and as a person, you want to have trading, that's your job, but you always need to place the focus and attention on um, the other you know, five staples in life, which is work, which is, you know, your health, working out, friendships, relationships, family, hobbies, and interests. And so if you're having a bad day or bad week trading, you have the other four or five things to fall back on, not even to fall back on, but to, to devote your, your energy on and, and your time. Um, and you know, without trading, I, I, I honestly wouldn't, I, I would never have been faced with having to really make a conscious decision to make time always to see family or to see friends or to work out and stay healthy. Um, it's funny because trading, it's, it's, at first it's all about work. Um, and you often selfishly a trader can think that, you know, there's just, it's more stressful and more demanding than perhaps other jobs. Um, but then you look at around and other jobs and, um, some people they, they don't they don't get faced with having to make those decisions and that conscious effort to you know make time with others and build out those relationships but as a trader trading reminds you what's really important uh, in those slumps in those periods and so again i ramble but but that's something that i really learned a lot early on from trading was to just always you know maintain that um that if i can call it like equality in your life yeah and that that, ba that balance, man, definitely, which I'm a huge believer in. Not well said, and shout out to Dr. Steenberger. That's that's Dr. S, yeah? Dr. S, yeah. He's great. Shout out. He's another, another person in my trading trading life that if he hadn't, you know, been there and helped me and, and, and advised, um, I, I wouldn't be, you know, a, a quarter of the trader that I am today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we love Dr. Steenberger here. We had him on the show as well. Good guy. Yeah, it was a great, great podcast you did. Yeah, I listened to that. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah good, good guy, man. Um, let's see what else I wanted. I was going to ask you something else. I don't know, Jay, you got any more questions for our, for our boy? Oh, that, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm really just, just really happy that we got, you know, to, to pick his brain and, and get some insight into the prop world, you know, because a lot of people talk to me about prop and I'm like, Listen, I was an order flow jockey when, you know, the bell rings, you know, we're in the bar, the prop grade traders are doing their research and, you know, by the time they're on their third chart, we're, our, we're pickled. So <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really nice to have because, you know, a lot of people ask me about that and, and prop I think could really help retail traders because they see the discipline and the work involved and, and the process yeah yeah oh yeah and i love love the business like approach because i think that's the way that's the way it should be viewed and i think people need to do that um and yeah ryan it's just a real real pleasure talking to you man i really i really love your whole process your mindset the way you go about things it was a pleasure talking to you oh i remember what i wanted to ask you working out what type of what type of um are you <laughs> weights Cardio, a mix of both. Like, what's your workout routine like? Yeah, I, I do. I do a mix of both. I like to be quite functional. Um, so, cardio, kind of CrossFit type of trading, uh, okay. training. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit of soccer with friends. Love to play to play soccer. Um, but to go to go on to on, on to your point and follow up with kind words, uh, it's an absolute pleasure being on you guys. It's been it's been really really great. Um, so thank you for having me on. It's been been a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome, man. Appreciate Great you. Idea. Appreciate Great you, man. Idea. And so with that, that's going to conclude today's episode of Confessions of a Market Maker. 
If you guys enjoyed the show, please rate and review it for us. If you guys want to learn market auction theory, market profile, trade futures, trade equities, JJ and I are at microefutures.com. We've got a fun community. Ryan, tell the people where they can find you and anything else you'd like them to know. Yeah, sure. You guys can find me on Twitter. My handle is at trader underscore RH94. And um, you can follow me on Instagram too. My Instagram handles in my Twitter bio. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All right, excellent. All right. And JJ, parting, parting words? Or I guess you kind of did already. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Just a pleasure <laughs> having you. Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure being on, guys. Really, thank you so much. All right, all right. And so for Ryan, I'm Pauly Walnuts. He's the gorilla of House Street. You stops, though. All right, guys. <laughs>